baby. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm finally making this video. Woo! My birth story. Thank you so much for being patient with me and waiting while I was recovering and just getting used to the newborn routine. I am just so happy and excited to be able to tell you guys exactly how everything went down. I ended up having a successful VBAC, just what I wanted, and I didn't have to be medically induced to go into labor. He came on his own just in the nick of time really kept us on our toes wondering what was going to happen right up until the very end but i did give um i did go into labor naturally so if you've been following me for a while you might um already know that my daughter who i had 10 years ago i was medically induced with pitocin she was also late they were worried about me having high blood pressure she was about 10 days late i believe and uh, i when I was pushing, I ended up pushing for four hours where they cut me off. She wouldn't move past a plus two station. So at that point, they pushed her back in and gave me a C-section. So with this birth, we didn't know if I'd have to have a repeat C-section or not. So if anybody is watching and going for a VBAC, here's your hope right here that it is possible and I did it. Hello, He's, he feels neglected because I've been taking care of the baby. The baby needs a lot of attention. <laughs> so because I had a C-section with my daughter, I had a strict cutoff time. They don't let you go past 41 weeks because they don't want to risk certain complications if you um, have to have a C-section again. So funny side story, I was actually scheduled to be induced on Sunday the 23rd because they were all filled up for inductions on Monday the 24th and I was added to a wait list, and then the weekend came around and I never got a phone call from the hospital. So I ended up calling and asking if anybody ever like, went into labor naturally and there were any spots open, and then funny enough, there was a spot open, so I was able to switch my appointment to Monday the 24th. And it was always really bugging me that they were having me scheduled for induction a day early because I felt like I didn't get the full seven days. I didn't have the full time for my son to try to come on his own. So then on Sunday the 23rd, I woke up in the morning and when I wiped myself, there was a little bit of blood and then throughout the day, there was a little blood every time that I wiped myself. So I guess that's the bloody show. I ended up calling the midwives and asking about it too. I was like, um, are you sure I still have to come in for my induction? I, it feels like something is happening. They're like, no, no, you have to keep your appointment. But we are really hopeful that you'll go into labor on your own tonight because that sounds like it's the bloody show. So throughout the day, I was feeling kind of crampy. I was having random contractions. I just didn't know if they were full-blown active labor contractions. So I continued my exercises and I was walking around this pond many, many times throughout that day. I was just feeling like very antsy. Oh my gosh, this is the last day that I have to go into labor on my own. And then at night, my contractions were so intense, I couldn't ignore them. I called my friend Allison to pick up Iris because I really wanted to go to the hospital. It's happening. Um, it's actually pretty amazing. I went into labor or baby boy decided to come on his own at, um, well, I started having contractions, but we came to earlier, but we came to the hospital at midnight before I was scheduled to be induced at 7.30 a.m. So <laughs> it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, I'm getting a break now because I got an epidural. Um, the plan was to do it all natural, but I kind of went from zero to 60 real fast. I was having a lot of contractions at once when I got here. And um, yeah, they were really intense. My water broke, and that was the craziest feeling. Test to do. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, but now I'm getting a little bit of a break, having some medicine in me, um, which I think that's okay because it's nice to rest. I might have like a marathon of pushing, and I want to. I want to enjoy it. I want to like be in the moment and you know, 
appreciate the beauty, which was really hard to concentrate on when I was having such intense contractions. Mm -hmm. But I am so happy that I went into labor on my own. Mm -hmm. That was a huge thing for me. I'm like, man, I just really wish I, I could do it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know that my body was cap capable of it. Five more babies are coming now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if I get more comfortable with the epidural if I'm just like eh <laughs> yeah. well you're doing great babe I love you didn't have the you know pressure to be granola mm -hmm. but so at the hospital I was joined by my doula Jessie Benson which by the way if you're looking for a doula in Minnesota I am going to put her information in the description she is amazing she was amazing throughout my whole labor and pregnancy like she's great she's actually a friend of mine since when I was a little kid so after I had been laying there with my epidural for a while the midwife came in to check me and see how far I'm dilated and she checked me I was ready to go. I was a full 10 centimeters and my son had labored down to a plus two station without me pushing. So I think that is something amazing too because I was starting with my son where I had left off with my daughter and I couldn't push past a plus two or they wouldn't let me continue pushing in California. I was starting off where I had left off. Mm -hmm. You were doing great. Well, they also, they told me that my chances were way better if I go into a plan yeah. on my own. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that is true. So all the things I think have come together beautifully. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you are having one. You might just catch the tail end, but if you want to try pushing down and then we'll, good job. Yeah, excellent. Excellent, excellent. You are just rocking this. And then we'll help you. And if, you know, if it's not something your body is telling you you can do, come on. Not a big deal. There's a no-show. All those Never mind. alpha classes mm -hmm. we were playing on. Right. I guess so. I know. There you go. <laughs> what the heck? She's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. you know, you She's sometimes they're helping people. She's been doing, like, the highest like level class the alpha classes at lifetime oh, okay. the whole pregnancy oh, wow. up until like last week <laughs> well i didn't go oh yeah there's i'm feeling something where it all started mm -hmm. i'm just kidding oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a terrible joke. That was actually really funny. <laughs> humor is a good thing <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I can't take you anywhere. Like, oh, no, so <laughs> well, you would just be arriving now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my alarm went off this morning and yeah. we both time to wake up for my induction. <laughs> <laughs> you would just be arriving now. So, yay. Okay. You've exceeded expectations. Here. It's a powerful force. This whole thing. I mean, the whole thing. You take one cell into your body and you make an entire human being, an entire organ. You push out both. You produce breast milk. It's like, <laughs> oh my word, how can it not be completely divine? I, I mean, unless you feel like sometimes it's just getting used to it. something's coming out of me. Oh, it's like, yep, it's okay. because we rotate it. Well, if it doesn't work for you and you want to just breathe your baby through, that's fine. Like, yeah, she's doing this. I mean, you are really, really, really doing this. Nice. He's even lower than he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, again, it just takes some time to get him around that pubic bone. I fully expect that. You're so okay on your hands and knees? Mm -hmm. You feel comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So the epidural for me just kind of took the edge off of the pain. I was still able to feel when my contractions were and I didn't lose sensation in my legs. The midwives and the nurses were saying they were really impressed by that, that I was still just able to do everything. I could hold myself up and change different birthing positions because they said a lot of times when people get an epidural, they can't feel their legs and they can't, you know, support themselves with their legs. Is this a normal position people birth in? Yeah. It's comfortable and you're making progress in it. 
that squat bar too, if you want to have a squat bar, you can hold on to it and do that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kim. This is your, you doing that rock ball? Yeah, that rock. My labor required a lot of gymnastics. I was guided through different positions, like runner's lunge, squatting, side laying. I had a peanut ball at one point, and my son progressed the most in a position called tug of war, where you have your feet up, on the bar and then you get a sheet and pull yourself up and kind of do a stomach crunch while you're pushing at the same time. Yes, 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 that's it. Oh, that's it, Nicole. You are amazing. Come on, baby boy. Come on. Now. Yeah, baby, there you go. So that one was really helpful for me. And with the midwives help guiding me and coaching me through this, this was just such a much better experience for me than what I went through in California. Um, in California, I wasn't even told that I could get off my back and change different positions. And I guess when you're on your back, you can close your tailbone while you're pushing and it can make it even harder. So I really needed to have these extra movements during my labor. It just helped me so much. So if you have the option to get a midwife, I totally recommend it. The midwives were just awesome. And they were just like really in my co corner and coaching me and like telling me all these different birthing positions that I can do. Okay. Yeah, I'm steady. Push them all, push them all, baby. You know, strong and steady. Oh, push them all. Oh, my God. Yeah, come on, baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hi. 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 Right away, baby. Hello. I love you so much. Hi. We did it. We did it. This year. Oh, not yet. Hi. Can you give us a little cry? No. We were trying. Hi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we got GoPro? Yeah. Hi. Come here, Mom. Hey. Welcome to the world. We did it. We did it. Good job. Again. Good job. Happy birthday. I saw you said something. I saw you. 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 I'm so proud of you. We did it together. I'm just looking forward to it. Officially a boy. I'm just going to lift him up. Is he okay? It's okay. 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 It's okay.
blonde. Mm -hmm. yeah. Little blonde eyelashes and little blonde, like little blonde sideburns. Oh, baby, he's perfect. <laughs> he's got perfect little toes and Love you. This is the recovery room. Um, only was here for one night um, since I didn't have a C-section this time. Mm -hmm. Get to, to check out soon. This is our new life. <laughs> Got the nice view though. This little bass pond. <laughs> Hawthorne is being held by his big sister. And he seems very content. He loves you, Miss Iris. Yeah. He matches the car seat. My baby boy's going home today. 24 hours later. Hawthorne, our sweet baby boy. We're so happy. Brandon is a proud dad. Iris loves being a big sister. She came to the hospital right away. She wanted to stay with us and be close to him. She's actually been camping out in our bedroom for a month. She brought a little cot in there so um, she can be close to Hawthorne while she sleep while he sleeps. Also, I didn't realize how gross birth was. <laughs> I don't know if I just forgot some of these aspects from my previous birth or I didn't get to this point, but there is a full-blown splash zone that these people have. I didn't realize the fluid keeps coming as you're as you're about to push the baby all the way out the lady was just such a pro I there were just times where I'd have a contraction and go Psh! and she just wipe off her face my poor midwife <laughs> hearing your baby cry is the most beautiful thing that you ever experience in life it is just such an amazing moment you're in complete bliss and it's so nice to be finally holding your child and then you're interrupted by the midwife telling you that she's gonna need to stitch you up. <laughs> yep, I tore. Not once, not twice, but thrice. One second degree tear and two first degree tears. The recovery from that wasn't too much fun, but I will say that the recovery giving birth vaginally is easy, was easier for me at least than the C-section that I had. It took about one week for me to feel fine again, but peeing hurt for one week. That was pretty rough. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to my birth story. I'm gonna go snuggle with my son now. He's been upstairs with Brandon so that I could film this video real quick. Welcome to the world, Hawthorne. You are so loved and you're gonna do great things.